So Corey, well, I think relevant to this discussion is what are the grading systems that are utilized? There, there are several grading systems. They are somewhat in an evolution and the, it, it's a relevant um, adjunct to the biomarker discussion. So uh, there are two dominant grading systems that are used today. One is called the modified consensus scoring system, and that's been in use uh, for more than 20 years now. Again, the individual organ stages uh, are consistent across all the uh, grading systems, uh, but the newer Mount Sinai uh, or MAGIC uh, organ staging and grading system uh, slightly changes the um, overall grouping of the individual diseases and does incorporate the number of bowel movements for intestinal GVHD, so it allows a slightly uh, more accurate way of grading and staging individuals. What's important to recognize is that individual organ grades and stages actually predict outcome. And that's why we use organ grading and staging uh, so that we can enroll patients in clinical trials, we can speak to each other as clinicians and have meaningful discussions about stage and grade and uh, be able to compare patients across studies. Now, we already touched on the risks for graft-versus-host disease. You mentioned a few, such as the stem cell source. Do you want to elaborate on a couple of more, a couple more uh, known risk factors for GVH? Absolutely. So I, I mentioned stem cell source, so peripheral blood stem cells, which have more T cells in them than bone marrow uh, stem cells, uh, have a somewhat higher risk of GVHD, although it's primarily chronic rather than acute. Uh, there are probably tenfold more T cells in a peripheral blood stem cell product than there are when the bone marrow is collected directly from the iliac crest. Other uh, associations are, of course, with histocompatibility. Uh, so, a antigen uh, HLA, uh, uh, an HLA antigen mismatched or an HLA allele mismatched transplant is associated with more graft versus host disease than those that are thought to be fully matched. Uh, it used to be thought that age of the recipient was important. It probably is. Uh, certainly different between adults and children, but there's no linear association with age. However, donor age does seem to be associated with a higher risk of GVHD, so older donors have a higher risk. There's some associations with viral infections, so CMV seropositivity, things of that nature. Um, the GVHD prophylactic regimen that's used is critically important. Some regimens are associated with uh, a higher risk of GVHD than others. Uh, uh, and uh, what else? Well, I think it's important, actually, that you touched on the, the prophylactic regimen, so maybe we can chat about that for a minute. So all patients require some form of prophylaxis against graft-versus-host disease. Uh, most of us use pharmacologic prophylaxis, and the standard in North America still is a drug such as tacrolimus or cyclosporin in conjunction with methotrexate. Uh, there are alternative conditioning reg uh, preventative regimens that are out there. We've pioneered the use of tacrolimus and sirolimus. And of course, in lower intensity uh, transplant regimens, we sometimes substitute methotrexate for mycophenolate, although the results don't seem to be as promising. There's also a whole other um, T cell depletion route where you can either pharmacologically or physically manipulate the graft and take away the T cells that are known to cause graft versus host disease or give medications that eliminate the T cells such as antithymocyte globulin or alemtuzumab. But it's important to recognize that the rates of GVHD that we see are despite the use of graft versus host disease prophylaxis. And, and, a, and a critical thing to realize about GVHD prophylaxis, at least with respect to T cell depletion, is, is that there is a positive component to graft-versus-host disease. And we refer to this as GVL, or graft-versus-leukemia. So uh, to some extent, depending on how the conditioning regimen is, is, is administered, um, the conditioning regimen contributes a very substantial proportion of the anti-cancer effect of, of uh, transplantation, but not the whole thing. And so part of it is an immunological recognition of the malignancy by the donor immune system, and we call this GVL. In reduced intensity transplants, which are typically performed in older people or people with comorbidities, it's the entire story. If you take all the T cells out, then you, by, by uh, virtue of eliminating uh, all of the effector cells, will get no graft versus leukemia. So the, we do know that for those diseases that are very sensitive to this type of immunological control, the GVHD prophylaxis regimen has to be carefully uh, uh, considered in advance so that you don't throw out the baby with the bathwater.